I promise you the international break is never boring where Arsenal are concerned. Benjamin White apparently has had some surgery and faces six to eight weeks out. I know Arsenal, you know, we could hardly deal with another injury. Leandro Trossard apparently is in talks to sign a new deal. I know some of you aren't happy with him. We've been linked with Zuba Mendy once again. So give me two seconds. I'll share my screen with you guys. Don't forget to smash the like button and we'll see what the current newspaper tabloids are saying during this international period. And you know what? Us Arsenal fans, we always sit there and we're like, we don't want the international break to come when times are times are good or, in fact, when times are bad because you just want to play football. I think this has been the first international period some of us just wanted a break from on-field matters. We know Benjamin White's been, you know, really and truly, I would love to know when Benjamin White's been 100% free in terms of injuries because every year you hear he's he, he's playing with injuries and, you know, commendable to him but clearly if you're having surgery you've been playing on this for a while and it needed to happen i don't want to be that guy could this have happened in the summer if it was relevant in the summer we won't know arsenal handed another injury blow as key player is ruled out for up to eight weeks after undergoing knee surgery an arsenal first team regular has undergone surgery this week on his knee he's expected to be out for up to eight weeks so may not return until 2025 i don't even want to Pardon me. I don't even want to look at our fixtures in 2025, let alone deal with this. He's expected to be out for six weeks, which first things first, obviously this is a man's health. So first things first, if this makes you have a healthier body, if this puts to bed any persistent injuries, we're all for that. We know the man's been playing through the pain barrier and really and truly, Mikel Arteta, did he not tell us kind of our uh, Benjamin White, sorry, was struggling around the Manchester City game. Think about how much football has been played, not just with Ben White, but Arsenal now. The 27-year-old is obviously a big miss. And one area we were confident about as Arsenal fans somewhat going into the season was obviously our defensive ranks, which Calafuri is expected to come back after the international break. Apparently, the last two weeks of November, we're now without Benjamin White. We know we need to manage Timber very carefully. And you're praying nothing happens to the Zinnies, the Kivios of this world. Tierney might even have to be utilised, people. Um, so, yeah, let's keep it moving. And we also know Bukayo Saka and Declan Rice have pulled out of... Um, um, playing for England this international break. So, yeah, it's peak. And really and truly, we probably face, unless Tommy Asu's back tomorrow, face the prospect of Partey probably returning to right back. And unless Mikel Arteta can fix what's going on, we're going to have the same persistent issues. Apparently, he's been carrying a joint issue this season. And apparently, it's on a joint, which, again, that must be kind of painful. So, shout out to Benjamin White. But, yeah, we're already without several players, people. So, yeah, man, Arteta did say he was praying that there'd be no further injuries. Boy, it's got to get... It's got to get tougher before it gets easier. Well, um, I did cover this in another video, but apparently Arsenal executives have flown out to visit the Cronkays in the United States, replacing Edu following his resignation last week. And the upcoming January transfer window are also expected to be on the agenda. I'm so sure, people. And again, this is improv. You know, I always do my preparation before we sit here and sit here and make videos. Oh, there it is. Because there was something in relation to Kieran Tini that we could quickly wander over as well people just on the topic of fullbacks funny enough Mikel Arteta has every right to drop me at Arsenal but I can copy William Saliba return says Kieran Tini very different but we never knock a man where they're down and there's been a lot of injuries at the football club boy you can never rule out at least Tini being used in some capacity until January at least and to be fair with you whether Kieran Tini started or not when we faced ourselves down to 10 men against Brighton and obviously Manchester City and maybe holding on to the leads against Liverpool and um, obviously Chelsea recently we could have done with him apparently people he's told the athletic wait if this is on the athletic we can look at this article full stop see why you go down rabbit holes sometimes people oh it's about oh, it's more about scotland should we just be this is why well, shouldn't go down a rabbit hole should we just scroll to where anything connected to arsenal football club is immediately concerned people the camps have been brilliant with me when i wasn't playing for arsenal i would say to myself three weeks to the scotland squad you'll meet a lot of your pals you've grown up with at different academies or celtic fair enough but where is the arsenal stuff well, fair enough. I apologise to you lot, people. Let's just go back and see, you know, if they've taken the trouble. Apparently, they have Zinchenko, Timber, Tomiyasu, Kivio. Four players can play there. So, if I go back and it's the same as before then, then I'm not silly. I know the chances I'll be leaving. But you never know in football, you get the rare case with Saliba where he came back after a couple of seasons, good seasons out on loan. But you don't see it too often with someone who's played for four years left and came back to play again. I mean, some of you, including myself, would at least want to use Tini until January. But there's that. 
Arsenal are monitoring Martin Zubamendi's situation and belief they can prove the Sociedad player's most viable destination in the summer. Mikel Arteta wants to add a six to his team to ensure they have maximum tactical options in midfield. I mean, we've been linked with Zubamendi before. You never know. You might can be able to convince him second or third time round, but it appears to me we should just move on from that. And I must admit, considering where Arsenal's form is concerned, obviously we're at the end of the year, there's probably been more of an aggressive push I feel in the media to to link Arsenal with players and now no you know most balanced fans are not stupid even if you signed all of these players tomorrow to join us in January we still are at where we're at in the league and the champs and what we've won or lost but it kind of does raise the more simple fans optimism I mean we've been here before we should have been talking about this and doing this in the summer really maybe we didn't have the issues we have at the moment in midfield apparently people um in relation to being his most viable option, Arsenal may present that the club have a good relationship with Real Sociedad for Moreno negotiations, not to mention Arteta's own legacy there. Moreno also offers a link both in terms of being able to guide Zubamendi on Arsenal, whilst also having played with him in midfield for years. While Zubamendi is widely seen as someone who will become one of the best midfielders in the world in his own right, Arteta also wants a number of different options at six. The manager wants to be able to pick from a pure pass or another who is physical and one who is press resistant. With that, he would be able to reconfigure his midfield for any given time. Fair enough, but it doesn't help us now. Uh, Leandro Trossard, he's been a bit of a villain of recent weeks, people. Apparently, Arsenal have been trying to tie down Trossard to a new long-term deal. Talks are ongoing between the club and the 29-year-old. Apparently, we all know he's been linked with clubs in Saudi Arabia. Apparently, West Ham are said to be monitoring him, people, which I wouldn't take too much stock in. He's played in all 11 Premier League games and four Champions League games in the group stage so far, owing to injuries and suspensions and the whole stuff we've been going from. Now, I don't think you're a good player or a bad player overnight. I like Trossard. Obviously, you know, when you've given that back pass to Salih, Bar, um, you know, you've missed a penalty in the Champions League, you've missed a couple of tappings against Chelsea, um, you know, sent off against City, you're down and you're locked, you're public enemy number one. But your two years prior, you was an assist king and you had a productive spell in terms of goals. So probably shouldn't be utilized as much, probably is, you know, respectfully to him, the 12th man. But I like him. But I could, I wouldn't sell him in January, but I could forgive fans for if a club from Saudi did offer us something for the 29-year-old, that makes sense if we were to let him go, even though we don't have the most options really in that role. Allegedly, Manchester United are reportedly set to sign Creative Football Academy star Emmanuel Zero after beating Arsenal and Chelsea in a transfer race. Apparently, all three clubs wanted to sign the under-15 wonder kid people. You, I assume, plays in Ireland. The Irish mirror tipped him to do well. So, yeah, fair play. Never seen him in my life, but if you're a good player, you're a good player. Apparently, Kivio is ready to push for a move away from Arsenal during the January transfer window, as several clubs have shown an interest in the Polish international. He's been here since 2023, as we know. Only really gets some game time when there's injuries or things of that. Ilk. Allegedly, he has interest from Napoli, Bologna, Juventus, Villarreal, Marseille. Has previously been linked with Sevilla, to be fair. To be fair, though. For all the clubs he was... Now, no two windows are the same, I guess. And January is a reactive market in itself. Clubs could have injuries and whatnot of their own. But he was linked with a couple of those clubs we've said, people, in, in the summer. And for all the talk, as well as a number of clubs that weren't mentioned, he didn't leave. Is that Arsenal saying you're not for sale and you're part of the plans? Could we not let you go with maybe concerns over whether we could or couldn't do business in other areas or injuries or things of that? It couldn't begrudge Kivio if he wants to go somewhere and play more regular game time. Arsenal fear Real Madrid are circling for Saliba. He's a priority in the 2025 summer transfer window. Next summer, he'll have two years left on his deal. So it's a pivotal time on the pitch in terms of convincing play these players they can win trophies in which Saliba has said he needs to be the most recognised centre-back. We've been linked with uh, Duran of Aston Villa as, many, as well as many other strikers, but apparently, this has said, new information suggests that Brentford's uh, Wiesa has also emerged as a serious target for the North London club. The 28-year-old apparently has seven goals in eight games this season. He's contracted until 2026 and has an estimated transfer value at 16.3 million euros. I don't believe this for a sec. Wouldn't I think he's a good player? Wouldn't mind his teammate in Buermo, who we have been linked with. And as you all know, the Benjamin Sescos and the Yokerezes of this world, speculation over 
what we'll do there won't go anywhere. Uh, we have been linked with Eitrek Frankfurt's Omar Marmouche, and apparently we will not make a move for him in the January transfer window. Liverpool are credited allegedly as the favourites to sign in him. We were previously linked yesterday. Go and check that video out, people, with preparing a €100 million Euros move for Mohamed Kudus. Whether you believe that or not is down to you lot. I personally don't. Definitely not where January is concerned. Let me know your thoughts on everything we've discussed here. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Peace.